So in today's video, we'll be making this. Now we don't need to go into Fusion or anything like that. It's gonna be super simple. We'll keep everything on the edit page. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to let you know about my website, jrtv.com, where we have hundreds of different templates available for DaVinci Resolve 17, 16, and 15. All of them are backwards compatible with the newest version of DaVinci Resolve. If you haven't taken a look, the selection of templates is pretty diverse with everything that you would typically think when you think templates, everything from titles, transitions, infographs, logo sting, slideshows, video displays, video effects, compositing elements, as well as a bunch of color pre set tools specifically for DaVinci Resolve's color page. If you're interested in taking a look for yourself, there's a link in the description. There are a couple of things that we'll probably want to get before. First one is we'll jump over to Google Fonts and there'll be a link in the description for this. But what we'll be doing is we will be grabbing this particular font. Uh, it looks just like a typewriter wrote it. And so like that's going to be the first thing. The second thing that we'll want is some type of a sound effect. Go over to Epidemic Sound, and in here, most people look at this website as just music for your videos, but they also do have this sound effects area. So I'll go in the sound effects, and then just let's put in type, and take a look at some of these sounds. I think I like this one just because it's not so crazy chaotic. Now it would really depend on how much text you want to have on screen or how fast you want the text to come on screen. You'd probably depict, you know, kind of depend on which one that you would want, but I'm gonna go with this one. Okay, we'll just bring that sound effect over into here. So now that we have our audio in here, we have whatever our project is, that's the one that we have open, and we have our font installed. Next, we just have to add it in. So to do that, it's pretty simple. All we're gonna do is just go up to the effects library, go into titles, and then we're gonna get this text plus node. Now this is actually the text plus node from Fusion, but we don't need to go into Fusion for anything. It just has a lot of settings over here that we can go into. I'm gonna hit the little drop down so we can see it, and we can see this right on. So I'm gonna first write up here what I want, and then we're gonna pick that font pick whatever color. I think that this color is perfectly fine. And I'm actually going to make it two lines and make it a little smaller. And then we can go over into layout and move it this way or an easier way to do it instead of that, we can just click this little button here and move the whole thing to where we want it to be like that. Okay, so now that I have my little thing and I think I actually want to add a couple of spaces in here, something like that. Maybe that would work. Or maybe just one line, back to having it as one line. And then just bring it down, right? So then uh, our sound effect is going to go on when we have this on, right? So our little right on, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna move the second one here, the end, and we're going to animate the end there. So first, what I would uh, recommend doing is determining how long on screen you would want this to be. So let's say, okay, it's on for a couple of seconds here. So maybe the five seconds that's here by default, just pick out however long that you want it to be on screen so that you can read that, right? And then we have to also depend to pick out how long we want the animation to be. So I'll start at the beginning, bring it all the way back, click this little button right here, that's to add a keyframe. And that's just a moment in time, I want the value to be something specific and we have it at zero. And then we'll come in. I'm just going to hold down shift and use my arrow keys to go in two seconds. So my animation is two seconds long and then have it come out. So now that is my animation, right? So now over those two seconds, we need to add in that sound effect. So we'll come to our media pool where we have that sound effect and we'll bring it down. Now we only want the, uh, the audio to be on for the two seconds. So we'll go one, two, and then we might be able to cut this here. So I'll just open this up a little bit. You can grab the razor tool or you could just hit control B and that will cut it right there. And now if we listen to this, it's not fast enough. So maybe we could grab the other one, but I think I'm just going to stick with what we have here and I'm just going to bring this in just a little bit. I'm gonna turn off snapping for now cause it's snapping right in there. And we can make our own little sound effect. Okay, so maybe that would be fine. I'm gonna cut that there. Now let's listen to that again. 
and maybe I will add a little bit on to the end. So we have one little click in the middle there like that. I feel like that would be perfectly fine. So that is pretty much our animation. Now we're pretty much done at that point. And because this was a fusion um, tool that was brought into here, you can see that there is the little stars here and we see this bar across the top. If you don't see the bar, you can turn it on. It's referred to as render cache. And because it has to go through the fusion engine and render there and then bring it back to the edit page, it's typically easier to use a render cache. If you don't see that bar there, you can come up here to playback. You can go into render cache and you can turn it on to user or smart. They both do different things for the edit page, but as long as you have uh, over here in, I think it's just in normal settings right here, automatically cache fusion uh, effects in user mode, then both of these modes would work perfectly fine. Typically people put it in smart. Either way, it will still have that bar there. And what that's doing is it starts out as red, as you can see, and then in the background, it'll render it into a small file. And then your computer, instead of going through the process of crunching the numbers, it'll just read that video clip that's in the background. And it's not anything that you have to be concerned with. It's just in the background. And then um, as you can see, until it gets cached, it kind of runs a little choppy, but it's a very lightweight effect that we have here. So it's not going to you know take any extra rendering time, but that's pretty much it. That's how I would add that in i feel like it does a pretty good job at, at what it does so and like what i was saying at the beginning of the video if you do want this particular sound effect or you just want to give you know try a 30-day free trial i do have a link in the description for epidemic sounds uh free trial so that's pretty much it that's my video in a nutshell how to get some right on text kind of like a typewriter style but yeah that's pretty much it that concludes this video with that being said i hope you enjoyed it my name is jr stay safe peace have a good one. Later, guys.